before we get our our, our, our final caller for today, um, also, and thanks for the extended, you know, because of part of the extended happy ending, thanks to everybody who comes to infotainmentwars.com, our uh, YouTube channel, and subscribes. We are within swinging distance of 20,000 subscribers. This time last That's year, crazy. we couldn't hit five, and uh, and we have we have bought no views, really, again, another... Because as we reach these little things, because of how the algorithm works on YouTube, once you hit these certain algorithm points, it automatically jumps you up in your visibility. You know, these are the little hurdles they put up. Mm -hmm. The same thing is true of Twitch. We're on twitch.tv slash Al Sparks. You can go there by uh, going to fwank.com, F-W-A-N-Q, of course, dot com, F-W-A-N-Q. Fwank will take you there, and uh, you can subscribe there using your Amazon Prime account. Uh, the more subscribers we have there, we have uh, just under uh, like 700. We have subscribers on there. If we had a thousand, that gives us an incredible boost. So please uh, subscribe if you're if you're an Amazon Prime member. It won't cost you anything, and it helps the show, boosts us up, and gives us that help. And we greatly appreciate it. All right, there you go. There's my sales pitch. Also, super chats and bits and stars on Facebook will also help us if you want to support the show. That's a great way to do it. And uh, yeah. That's I think that's I think I covered all the bases. I think I, I think yep, so. That's it. All right. Uh, let's let's take our uh, last caller. I think it was Paul in Seattle was uh, waiting on the line. If he's still with us. Oh yeah. Oh Patreon. Yeah, I forgot hey, to mention uh, Patreon. But that's, yeah. Hey Paul. Johnny needs to get some heavy distortion and about twenty millisecond delay on that uh, hand part sound. It really I think he that's true. That or something in the studio. Absolutely. Yeah. Straight right. up Jimi Hendrix yeah. at Altamont. Or wherever. Yeah, it, yeah, the the request has been noted. No, <laughs> uh, so, you know, Al, I'm thinking the uh, the Republicans in their in their voter obstruction national voter obstruction uh, movement. It, my analogy right. is uh, this week is kind of uh, you know what like adverse property uh, adverse possession is with property where um, you know you buy a piece of property and you know the white trash neighbors on either side have have probably already have like encroached on it you know like they, boy do i they're playing on it for yeah <laughs> yeah and so then mm -hmm. you know they but they kind of mow it and that they and then they put their kids jungle gym on it and then and then your kid goes over there and plays on it and says, take it off our property you know and right and then he says this, this is our property they said no no it ain't no it ain't and and then they take you to court and and then yes. they say, well, how, how long has this been going on? You know, and the judge, and you say, well, we've been playing. We, our kids have been playing there for 15 years there. We put our jungle gym there in 1979. He never said nothing. And then it's a default property line adjustment. They just put, they just got your property, right? It's just, that's right. I mean, this happened to me. I bought a piece, we bought a piece of, I don't know, an acre, an acre out in Woodenville here. And, uh, and the neighbors on every side had been encroaching on it, mostly because of the topography and it was overgrown. And when I started right. clearing it off, because my wife is a you know a, a botanical gardener, everybody's screaming at me, "Hey, that's our property!" You know, and right. and I said to my wife, right. you know, "We must have an acre around here somewhere, babe." I mean, it's you know, yeah. <laughs> it's up. Here, but... It's uh, yeah. It's a uh, you, your acre goes up. It's uh, it's part, it includes part of the sky. But unless they ha unless your neighbor starts flying a kite, in which case. <laughs> They, if the if the kite stays up long enough, they own part of the sky over your property as well. Um, well, and it, you, yeah, it, and if it keeps up long enough and you don't push back, then this is exactly what's happening. Is that you know when you when you try to be nice about stuff and you try to be reasonable, what you end up with is your state legislature, you know, just takes away your rights to vote. I mean, it's just one of yes. those things that they it's a little bit little by creep, creep by creep, you know, little by little. And that's kind of what they've done in these states to the, where the point where uh, it's it's going to be very difficult, I think. Uh, for instance, in Georgia, I, I think one of those Senate seats, I think Warnock's seat actually is up for re-election in 22. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be tough to for people to, to – to, and the way they write these things, I can see the court bill. For instance, the, the law that says you can't give somebody a bottle of water – I can see the right. court saying, "Well, that would apply to white. That would apply to white people too." But the, the right. law doesn't say how it will be implemented. In other words, it doesn't say. That, but in Atlanta, we're going to take out all of the the polling places, right? We're not going to do right. that in the white suburbs. That's not in the law. The court doesn't see that in the law, so they don't see. You see what I mean? 
Exactly. Well, yeah, that's that's precisely what they're doing. Is they, like you make the the lines intolerable and it impossible. And and by the way, there will be a lot of uh, you know water passing out at lines all over the place in in uh, in Florida and the like. And they can't un, they can't invalidate someone's vote because someone gave them a bottle of water. Right? Your vote still counts. So even if and they can't come that's over. That's a war crime. And, Possession is nine tenths of the law. They can't take the water away from you once somebody's given it to you. So the law falls apart and it won't stand up to anything. So uh, like it's an absurdity. But you're absolutely right. We have there's a lot of these areas where we've slowly but surely ceded uh, um, some uh, you know a lot of this control in a lot of areas. It applies to you know the right wing controls of the airwaves. Quite frankly, the 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 right wing owned Patreon. You know which I forgot to bring up in the last little bit, but that's. That is, you know, that's how they grew. They, you know, they learned the Super Chat game on su- uh, on YouTube before anybody else did. And it powered this revolution in online right-wing propaganda n- networks. Mm. And by the time we caught up and everybody was like, well, that's, that's kind of what they do. We don't want to do that. Even though it has nothing to do with anything. It's, there's no side to it. We just see that territory. Well, we'll just... You know, that's their area, and we won't even fight on that field. That happens in a lot of areas. I mean, it's it's how the fairness doctrine, which you're, you know, the removal of the fairness doctrine was fair towards everybody. I mean, it's the same kind of application. Is he still with us? You know, uh, there you go. Really think about right wing talk radio being, uh, oh, only wackies listen to that. And it turns out, yeah, a lot of wackies. And then it was, uh, you know, Steve was saying that earlier. Uh, and and kind of, kind of not taking it. Then it's the only thing on. Not responded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what, and I think, I think one of the ways that Democrats all over the country should, uh, you know, beyond HR1 and, and, and SR1, um, or S1, um, is put a bill forward that, that, you know, in state legislatures all over that protect the right to vote. That you know a, um, a a per capita rule on voting machines, functioning voting machines, and that anybody who, in in state government who knowingly and willingly puts a uh, a, a non working voting machine, one that's going to break down or is not functional, in a particular district, any district by the way, uh, that person can go to jail. If they're, and if they're specifically doing it as a strategy to try and diminish the vote in an area, that's punishable by a fine and jail time. Those kind of things. Like the Democrats, one of the ways they could do it is you don't necessarily, you don't, you know, beyond not acquiescing to these rules and and also by fighting them in court as Republicans try to put them forward because they are an uneven applications of the law, is to start writing laws that, that codify the right to vote. That start regularly even you know in the case that they fail um because republicans filibuster them make republicans in the senate for example filibuster a constitutional amendment that codifies the right of every american citizen to vote that it is it is seen legally on all fronts as a right um there there have been areas where you know in the i think in the 14th amendment where they refer to it as a right but don't actually assert it as a right that the right to vote based on you know uh your uh gender your sex or your race um or your national origin you won't be denied the right to vote on that but you're not guaranteed the right to vote either you're just not going to be denied it based on those things we're going to do it based on well if all the minorities are in a poor area we'll just deny the voting machines to the poor area and you cast the net where you want to catch the kind of fish where they're going to hang out right and so that's actually one of the ways that you could fight back on this stuff is that anybody who denies any american citizen their right to vote and that they have an absolute right to vote and that interference in their absolute right to vote uh is a crime would uh, would shift how a lot of the, you know these behaviors over time over about ten years because people would start going to jail for purging people they knowingly knowingly from the voter rolls that they know are legit voters and they're just using schemes to do it 
you could, you know, that's that's a violation of their rights, and therefore they would lose in court both criminally and civilly. There has to be active push on that. Uh, thank you, Carl. It's the Fifteenth Amendment. Bless you uh, for bringing that up. It's so the idea is that there's references about you can't deny it based on that, but you also can't support it. We're, it's just there. The right to vote is this kind of like, well, it's there if you want to. We're really a republic, and uh, the voting is sort of a the choice of whether or not to vote. You know, is 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 questionable to begin with. So that, uh, that, I think, would have some value. Thank you for the call, Paul. I appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who tuned in today. Thank you uh, for the Super Chats. Thank you for the Patreon support. Thank you guys for those that signed up on, uh, on, on Twitch as well um, for being a subscriber there. Bless you for that. Everybody on Facebook, thanks for gathering with us, especially the, the trolls, because you spread our, the influence of the show further than anybody else. Uh, I mean, really, where would we be without you? We'd be just preaching to the choir. And we wouldn't have anybody hate watching us. And that's that would be sad. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Thank you, Johnny Million. You're awesome. Uh, thanks again. And happy birthday again to Can't Stop Lying. We'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys on my live stream on Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific time at infotainmentwars.com or flank.com. I will be live streaming the entire first day of the uh, Mike Pillow Symposium. See you later.